Good morning, jó reggelt, mondjuk Ináca. Először is azt szeretném elmondani, hogy akinek fordításra van szüksége, kaphat füles zenkőnél, a beszélgetés angolul lesz. De csak primul rendásra visszaszkodni, hogy a cei care doresc a traduncere, trebuie să csára headphones, de la zenkő, pentru că diskuciába fiúni ma engleza. Varugam. And now I will switch to English and say good morning again. Um, we will start this discussion, which will be like two hours long. Um, and the idea for the discussion is to have a common topic for all the artists and all the audience here. Um, it's a topic proposed by the festival itself. It's uh, art and social responsibility. Uh, I will uh, say more details about this topic, but first the design of this discussion is to have a first part uh, discussion with the artists and we will try to have a dialogue between themselves. This is my responsibility. Uh, the whole discussion is probably my responsibility, which is uh, a little heavy weight. Uh, and the second part is the idea to have um, a discussion with the audience, with you here in the room, and we will maybe ask people to give some interventions and reflections to the first part of the discussion. So let me introduce uh, the speakers or the participants of this morning. Uh, I go from left. Uh, Janina Carbonaru from Romania, who has the performance in the program artist talk and what we are doing now is an artist talk uh, and uh, we might give some background for this preparatory, preparatory talk for this performance. Um, uh, next to Janina is Maya Perevich and uh, her co-producer uh, uh, and our artist on the stage of Olga Dimitrievich, they are from Serbia with the show Freedom, the most expensive capitalist word, which for a long time I read World uh, as a misreading of the title. And uh, Al Pacinic, who is a director from, based in Hungary and he works a lot outside, um, and he directed Exit, which we saw last night. So the, the topic of this discussion is um, art and um, social responsibility, which may be, a, a, it's a world word I would change to social awareness, so social cons cons consciousness, since responsibility is a very heavy, loaded word, and sometimes it is put from outside of artists, and it's a lot of expectation from artists to be socially responsible. And uh, the first one of question I would like to put is um, how do you see your position as artist? How, what is expected from you? What is uh, the social responsibility um, in your work expressed? What is the expectation from inside and from outside toward your work? and uh, maybe also how you uh, define this position as an artist, um, how you use this social responsibility or responsibility um, not only in your work but in any other public space you use or we use, this is a public space and we might make good use of this public space in uh, 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 in connection with social responsibility. So the, the first question to, to wrap it again is how you define this word related to your work and how you define your position uh, as an artist. It's, it's a position uh, which is too much loaded with such expectation or how do you look at it? Who would like to start? Anyone <laughs> closer to my the microphone? <laughs> there are plenty of microphones. So, um, for myself. 
myself, um, I don't feel any, um, in this context in Romania, I don't feel any uh, expectation um, from outside. I mean, um, if you look at the, um, at the strategies of the theaters, you won't see um, so many expectations for uh, social awareness. On the contrary, so in the last um, six years, um, let's say the state theaters became more and more uh, commercial as strategy, as um, propositions. Um, actually, in a way, the independent, a part of the independent scene uh, took this responsibility of the state theater. So in this sense, I have no pressure from uh, outside. There is no such. On the contrary. Um, I'm not very I'm not very pleased also um, when um, even when a theater accepts a project that is let's say uh, more connected with reality with um, yeah social political topics they produce it but they they don't schedule it twice three times per year while other shows are performed at least three times per month from the same theater. So in this sense, I don't, I don't think there is a connection between artists, um, social awareness, social political awareness, and uh, theaters in Romania. Um, but I guess for me, um, because I, I sometimes uh, like to be provoked by this conflict, uh, probably that worked for me in the sense that uh, it made me even more aware of this um, responsibility, let's say. This, this lack of pressure. From the um, I think uh, be becoming very commercial or more and more commercial is a very general phenomenon. I could add Hungarian theatre is becoming very commercial. Um, and also the state theater avoiding more and more uh, producing shows with uh, like social political responsibility and awareness. So you s one can see what, well, what I see is that the independent theater has to play the role of being a part of it. Here in Romania, independent and private, and it's. It's a long discussion, but let's say a, a, a small part of this independence in had to uh, take this mission. On the other hand, I'm also producing and working with state theaters. I'm not, I mean, I, I am independent, but it's more complicated than this. For instance, I can do a project, but I have no space, so I'm going to a state theaters and co-produce. You know, it's not so... Uh, Precise. This, uh, but again, this lack of, of pressure for me it worked. Like uh, I think it helped me to be more aware that uh, there is no space where you can actually um, express I don't know uh, um, things connected with this reality we are living in, and this made me reflect about this and do it in um, performances that I created independently or in co-production with theaters. The problem is working independently. Uh, I don't know if it's, it, it's connected with our topic, uh, what I'm saying now, but okay, you do a project, but then if it's not performed, you are aware and with you are aware, I don't know, uh, 300 people who see the show and uh, Yes, I think this is, this is very much connected to the topic. If there is a, 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 a project produced by a state theater and it's not performed, and it's because it's not enough commercial and it's, it doesn't sell very good. It uh, sells. No, it's not about. <coughs> it's not a problem of um, selling or not. It's not a problem of uh, of selling tickets. 
I don't know what's the problem, but the tickets are not the problem. Um, Would you reflect on this question of expectations? And well, I actually uh, just wanted to reflect first on the idea of social awareness in theaters today. Actually, I think that today we live in a society that has too much social awareness in a paradoxical way. Um, when we talk about the freedom of expression, I think that today it's uh, in uh, mainstream theater. Now I'm talking uh, mainly about Serbian theater, of course, as I know this, uh, uh, this society the best, uh, uh, that we have a problem uh, of uh, this uh, institutionalizing of uh, political theater, as political theater becoming something that is uh, mainstream. And uh, so this kind of uh, social awareness that happens in uh, mainstream theaters uh, in Serbia and this kind of uh, uh, turning uh, political theater into something that uh, is actually uh, very uh, unpolitical in a way is, I, I think, a big problem uh, today uh, in, uh, in our uh, uh, contemporary society. I think it's not only uh, happening in Serbia, I think it's happening all over the world, and I think it's uh, reflecting the current uh, uh, neoliberal uh, situation that we are living in, as we have uh, uh, the, the freedom of talking uh, uh, about whatever we want, uh, but then uh, uh, these uh, topics that we really want to reflect uh, as really changing today's society and really questioning some crucial things that are wrong in the society, uh, it happens uh, rarely in, in uh, mainstream theater and uh, of course if it happens anywhere else uh, it has uh, uh, little visibility. Uh, and I think that that is a very important topic today when we talk about social awareness. Yeah, I also wanted to continue a, a, a little bit on what you said in a way that uh, uh, it, it feels like social awareness or politically engaged theater also became a kind of commodity in a way. And uh, uh, it's, uh, it does not mean that some particular plays or, or shows are not uh, uh, sincere in their political intentions, but somehow in the whole context of uh, European theatre system and uh, 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 both with institutions and both with uh, independent scene. Uh, I'm not talking about particular projects, I'm more talking about the structure that enables that we talk about whatever we want in a, uh, and to make co-productions and to make and to communicate between each other and to talk about uh, 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 I don't know the, 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 whichever topic from uh, uh, corruption uh, to, I don't know, fallacies in European Union, to refugees, uh, to wars, uh, 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 to reflect on immigrant position and so on and so on. But in the sense, all of us are playing the game of, uh, playing our game of the artist in a way, okay, now we're going to be politically engaged artists, <coughs> we're going to say something really serious about our space and about our society that we live in, uh, but at the same time the question of how much disturbance, how much agency for any kind of disturbance we have, I would say it's a very important question and I would say that there is very little uh, agency in our hands in, the, in that whole thing, but that still does not mean that we are not supposed to do it. In, the, in a way that, uh, 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 okay, let's wait for, uh, 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 let's be ready to join the great social movements when they arise one day, progressive social movements, and let's, at the same time, do our jobs the best we can. Uh, personally, my, uh, uh, in, in my professional life, um, it's very important to divide <coughs> the work and uh, uh, the voluntary activities. So for me it's two different things. So when I'm working in the theatre like here, so for me uh, it's, a bit, uh, it's a special responsibility <coughs> of me because I have to serve the interest of the theatre, interest of the audience, or because it's a repertory theatre and if I make a, uh, if a project, a product, so it's many, many interests around it. Of course, I'm, I can be free, 
but it's um, it's a special relation to the to the audience to the actors. Um, so it's it's much closer to the entertainment, I think. So for me, it's so important. It's it's as deep uh, uh, ent entertainment as possible, but it's ent ent entertainment. So the people will buy tickets. So somehow I have to find a good relation when we can use this time for something uh, important in, uh, in the social meaning. Uh, of course, it's a, it's, it's, it's a forum that what we can use for talk about our, our uh, circumstances, but, uh, but when I really want to make something in the, the meaning of politics, so for me it's, uh, how to say, when I have to, uh, to build a real, uh, concrete relation to the movements, to, to the street, to the demonstrations, to, to use the Facebook, uh, uh, and it's absolutely voluntary work. So when it's two different things, so because one and I somehow I have to leave, so how to say, I don't want to lie in this situation, so it's my job. So somehow I have to use this chance for a good sense, for, for uh, um, but uh, so I, I stopped the, 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 the total independent activities in, in in the art. So now how I living so I have to I have to adapt to the different situations. And I use this situation for learning, so to learn about the different societies, the different uh, uh, some uh, lots of experiences from the different parts of Europe. So it's it's a very good time. But when I want to use these experiences uh, uh, in a political sense so another way. Uh, yeah. um, do, do, do you also have, uh, Arvind is talking about dividing the roles of a artist and as an activist, let's say, as, as, a, as a civil activist. And something you might not know, everybody here uh, that has a series of videos on his Facebook page, which gives him um, sometimes a much higher visibility than the shows. Uh, and more shares and likes. Um, and he's talking about dividing these roles. Do you experience something like that as well? Dividing uh, roles when you talk to a different public or to reach more people? Because Olga said that sometimes uh, the work has little visibility or would not reach too many people. We all talked about visibility in a way. Uh, uh, um, yeah, well, uh, 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 dividing the roles or not dividing the roles, I didn't really think about it, but uh, I think it, uh, 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 what I completely relate to and what Arpad said is uh, uh, something that I read is recognizing the role of artists, recognizing that the things that we do in theater are jobs and work, and uh, it's something that you know, we go, we do the job, we produce something, we are paid for that and we live out of that. It's some kind of a profession. And at the same time, the topic of activism is also extremely important for me, for example. And uh, I, mean, I don't know, my, I'm involved in uh, some small activist scenes here and there in Belgrade. But what I could notice from uh, uh, the, the, the whole period of transition and uh, 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 post-socialist transformations that happened is that also any kind of activism that may be merged as grassroots or so and so became profession uh, professionalized in a way and that slowly and through the years it created a huge problem actually between uh, 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 it created a problem in communication of active between activists and people that they are addressing and in that way um, but the, the, and there we come to the maybe paradoxical moment that at least in Serbia nowadays I have more influence, I mean, or Maya or whoever, we can have more influence as artists if we talk about some particular uh, 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 topics than if we would be doing some field work because the whole infrastructure, like social infrastructure for doing the field work with 
any kind of social group or on any kind of matter actually got lost or professionalized or it was uh, pacified or uh, uh, however. And then in that sense, between uh, uh, addressing small crowd of 30 people on the street and addressing crowd of 300 people in the theater and then maybe performing the show 10 times and then having the outreach through Facebook and then having something else, uh, uh, that's actually where somehow these two positions uh, uh, might merge, but not as the positions of no, now I'm uh, 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 the artist who is also going to be the actor, and, and I see that uh, as intertwined completely, but that we all come with some sense of uh, political and ideological values that then we sometimes have the power to transform into the public sphere. Yeah, and uh, also I would like to add, uh, I agree when uh, Olga says that these things uh, sometimes uh, merge, uh, but in a way I think that it's for me, but I also think for you, it's impossible not to think the way we do theater from the ways we see the society. I think that it emerges all the time. So in a way, uh, I think that the, the maybe real activism in theater today is to uh, question yourself all the time. Uh, what, what, what is your position and from which position are you saying this and not uh, thinking that uh, you are um, right and not uh, giving your position. I think the, the main maybe problem of political to the theater today is that uh, uh, it wants to give some questions and it wants to exclude itself from this kind of society. It's uh, uh, very important uh, that you are not patronizing the audience and not telling it, okay, now we're telling you what is the way that the, the world is supposed to look like and these bad people somewhere else are ruining our world and we're here to make it better. We have to always put ourselves also in the position of the people that are making the society the way it is and we are part of it. So if we're talking about, uh, I don't know, if we're making an anti-capitalist show, we have to know that we're actually living in capitalism and, and we're actually using these commodities on an everyday basis and we're very much capitalists ourselves in lots of situations so we have to always address ourselves and I think that this is the, the real activism in theater saying okay the society is wrong we want to fix it but we're actually also making it wrong and we have to fix ourselves through the theater also so uh, you said something that, that I also find that, that extremely important when you talk about political theater, and that we keep on forgetting how bourgeois this institution is, and that uh, 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 in the moment when we are making a super strong political show about whichever topic in the universe, the, uh, uh, we need to remember how much we can fall into the trap of creating the alliance between ourselves as the artists and the audience that is present in this bourgeois institution and then we can say look at this we know the truth we know how the society really is and not those people somewhere outside of the building who do not go to the theater who are not educated who are so we must be aware of, of that trap that we can easily fall into I think Janina's performance artist talk is uh... I think six scenes question the position of the artist and uh, I think it's very important what Maya said that uh, that activism comes also from questioning this position who we are, what part of you we speak of and uh, I don't know if you would like to reflect on what has just said and said about this division of artistic role, <coughs> civil role, activist role or how they merge, which are those uh, Territories by the much. Um, I'll try to give an example. For me, it's easier to speak in. Um, Come to the end. Uh, no, but um, to reflect, to be honest and reflect on my own experience somehow. Like uh, you said, we are part of the problem. So uh, um, I, I, um, I remember that we did a project, we were a group. Uh, of artists, um, directors, and we did a project uh, that started with the um, with research in Rosia Montana. Rosia Montana um, is a gold mine, probably the biggest in Europe, 
and uh, let's say six, yeah, we did a show six or seven years ago when it was not yet a topic. The problem was that a Canadian company wanted to start exploiting that uh, part of the, that gold mine. And uh, there were activists and people from the village who were protesting uh, and who were resisting for a long time <coughs> this uh, exploited, exploitation. And uh, we went there and we spoke with, um, with the people who were still in the village and we spoke with activists and we spoke with the people from the um, Gold Corporation, from this Canadian company. And uh, when we did the show, uh, it was very interesting that the activists who came to see it and of course the guys from the Gold Corporation, but that was not a surprise actually, they uh, kind of, some of them, they kind of hated the show. And in that moment I realized that yes, uh, in my private personal life I can fight for some things. But when I'm doing a show I should, uh, I don't know, things are not so easy. <laughs> and um, what was really striking in these two parts, two sides, the gold corporation and activists, for me, they never thought about the people. They always spoke about uh, in the Romanian interest, money, but they never really spoke about the people living in that area, like what really happened to them to have uh, 24 hours per day TV um, media there in the village, to be uh, like in a Big Brother show. They never thought how these people uh, um, decided to live there or how did some of them decided to leave that village and sell their houses for a fortune, but for them maybe those money were important to give education to their children. So for us that was the perspective, the people's perspective, the people with whom we spoke. Uh, in. <coughs> and uh, when you, when you, yeah, when you are involved in these kind of stories, things become more complicated than black and white. Because in this, um, <coughs> I think, I think you should have a position, a very clear position, connected to a subject, like it was the subject with Rosia Montana. For me, there was no discussion. It was black and white as a person. But when you do the performance, things become... Uh, and that's, that's a good thing, not to be, I don't know, uh, trapped in an ideology or in a, Or to try at least not to... Uh, you're talking about clear position, uh, but sometimes in your show, uh, in artist talk, you are talking about many positions. There is no kind of uh, deep position. No, I, I was speaking about a subject. Let's say for Russia Montana. For me, it was not a big discussion uh, if it's good or it's bad. It was bad and. Um, it would destroy a lot of things. No, that was clear. There is no so much uh, discussion about this. As, but as a citizen of uh, normal citizen, <coughs> yeah, but it, 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 just it, to say something, you said not being trapped in ideology, but if you went there and you spoke with people and then you got another perspective and you stopped being black and white for you, actually you are still in some kind of ideology, you just took into the account what people said. I don't understand. Uh, 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 if I understood you correctly, uh, in that case of having corporation taking over the mine and destroying the area, pollution and so on, I guess that, that was the case. And not only, if that's what I'm saying, the discussion is very long, but Okay. Yeah, 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 but if I understood you, you said that you, for you, everything was black and white, in that case. And then you went to speak with people who lived in the place, mm -hmm. and then you made a show about it, if I uh, understood you correctly. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, and if your position at the beginning was black and white, in the sense, okay, this is bad and this is good, mm -hmm. and if in the show you realize that you have to make it a little bit more in the shades of grey? No, it was not in the shades of grey. It was uh, not in the shades of black and white of activists who are saying these people who are selling their houses, they are traitors of the nation yes. and so on. 
And if you try to see from their perspective, if, if you and you took into the account perspective of people, that's the, 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 that's what they. But you're still uh, uh, on some kind of ideological position, which is maybe a little bit more. How how would I say? It's not about the fight between uh, uh, big corporation, which is powerful enough, and not uh, about the perspective of the activists who. It, it's uh, uh, the, the, the case is familiar. It happened several times in Europe, uh, uh, especially about some, the, the situations like mines or so. I also know about one in Sweden. Then again, if you take into the account the stories of people who were not consulted before, you're still in some kind of like, you are still holding some ideological position. You are actually make, making a political decision to include the stories of the people who were not included before in the public discourse. So in that sense, the, the, I would still bring the politics. The, I would never exclude the politics from from the story uh, 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 like that. You know, I think that just taking taking the the, 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 the people's stories, mm -hmm. they are not taking the people's. We didn't do documentary, and that's that's a long discussion because you don't bring when you bring on the stage this. You don't bring the, the story of those people, or you don't give a voice. Okay. But you are um, uh, bringing on stage your meeting, your personal meeting with this uh, reality, which is something else than black and white. Again, it's your very special, and it's not only one person uh, experience. A bigger team of artists, and we had a lot of. Uh, that was interesting to think about. We were three directors, and each of us had a very strong position at some point, and we had kind of uh, polemics, I mean, <coughs> during the show and you could see that. I'd, but yeah. it's still politics, no? Three different politics might be if there was three directors. Well, everything is politics, I'm sorry, but <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course, when you touch this subject, uh, even if you want to do a musical, it will be political. <laughs> but why, why, why should we be afraid to be political? What's the... <laughs> Avoid, to avoid the ideological position, to extract yourself from the ideology, and then I just said, but no, actually what you, what what you described, it sounded completely like actually taking a, another ideological stance, or maybe reflecting on it during the process or something like that. I, that's the only thing that, it's not that... No, what, what I'm saying, what I'm saying to avoid ideology, maybe I was not very clear. But we see that um, we um, start to become quite polarized now. You know, there is no real discussion between the left and the right, and so even if on the political level, basically they do the same thing in terms of measures. In uh, Romania, at least, I didn't see a big difference between uh, both sides. So in this sense, maybe, uh, you know what I mean. Uh, not to be trapped in the, this right um, discourse or the left discourse. I think theater kind of uh, yeah doesn't have to, to, to be trapped in this, you know, to... This is very much... Left what is presented is left. left, 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 left. Um, my next question is, is related to this discussion where you would like to understand each other, it's a great effort, I think, uh, is uh, the many points of view the shows, your shows, offer. Um, for instance, in Exit, you said last night that you leave the question to the audience, what happens after and what should happen, what is outside, it's a question uh, which the audience should answer. In Olga and Maya's show, uh, which is a very, I, I think, um, it's a kind of over-identification with, with an ideological point of view, or highlighted identification, uh, and it's a kind of, subver I would call it a subversive point of view. You are subverting uh, expectations of the audience. And in Janina's performance, you have many different points of view, positions of artists, not only of artists, but of journalists as well, put together. And my question is that 
uh, this shows, um, so there is no one ideological standpoint or one, one point of view from which position these works are created. Uh, my question is, uh, so there is a, a very large offer to the audience how they should relate to these shows, how sh should they choose a point of view or combine or reflect upon different points of views. My question is, what is the expectations of, of the artist from the audience? What do you expect from the audience? Maybe in your concrete shows, in these shows which are presented in this festival. Uh, because I think th these shows are much more open to what and how the audience should relate upon. Um, Well, actually, I uh, think that, uh, well, now I'm going to talk, uh, you'll probably agree with me, but if you don't. Um, uh, I think that in, in the case of our show, it is actually one position, and it's our position. It's the position of Olga and me. Of course, the two of us have different positions, but still, it's Olga's and Maya's perspective of the world. And when we were doing Just the show... Just let me add one thing which the audience here might not know, that you, the two of you are on the stage, and in, this, in the case of the other shows, yeah. the artists are not on the stage. Yeah, but still, uh, even if the two of us were on stage, we could have had lots of different ways of doing the topic. Uh, we actually, uh, when we uh, started doing this show uh, about North Korea, even before going to North Korea, we actually had our own perspectives as we were doing research on the field of how the Western eyes sees the, the other, the enemy, the uh, black, uh, the mysterious black hole the, of the Far East uh, as North Korea is uh, perceived today. So we had this kind of a discourse which we, we, we um, actually, this was the only perspective we could have as we live in the West, as we, we only have, uh, we can only watch Western media, of course, we cannot watch Chinese or Russian media as we don't know the language, so this was our perspective, watching the, the media coverage of, of this story. Then, of course, the perspective of going there, and then, of course, the perspective when we came back and, and uh, in a way, reflected our own positions through it. And, of course, it being uh, uh, not just uh, uh, European, but Eastern European, and being uh, from uh, uh, big citizens of ex-Yugoslavia and having a completely different position than other people that would, I don't know, come from uh, Western European countries, America or other communist regimes. So we had a lot of positions here, but at the end we were to telling only one story. And we were really trying to reflect our own story and our own perspectives through, through uh, the story of uh, North Korea. So maybe you want to add something? There is very little to add, but yes, you're right. We have, of course, the circumstances differ a bit. But when we started making the show, the show was a product of many of our conversations, and it really the show that we are completely in the ideological sense. We are standing behind it fully, and in our case, that's one position. The show shows practically some, some sort of de debate and how we reflect upon this one position, but we went for, for this particular one and questioned it all the time and then again uh, confirmed it in a way, so, yeah. Um, maybe I could uh, rephrase the question to Arpad, who has done shows which are politically even more engaged than this one, and I would like to ask you to to think about what what is your expectation from the audience. Uh, there, you had also a show when you were on the stage and uh, other shows which were like more activist shows or clearly politically activist um, strategies. What is what do you expect from that audience? Firstly, they come to the theater to see. <laughs> so. Um, 
different, uh, uh, yeah. So in the case of this performance, what we played here, so for me, the, the, my expectation is to go through the story and try to follow the 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 story of the characters and uh, and the audience can to try to understand the the the. The cause of the decisions of the, the characters, to, like in a normal traditional theater. So, because of this, yeah, different expectation in the different situations. So, uh, the, the performance what you talk about when I was on the stage, it was a, it was a performance that was very personal. Per, uh, the cause of the performance was uh, some attack what I felt from the the. How the theater professional authorities or some uh, uh, political representatives, and because of this, it was very. Uh, it, it came from my personal angry angriness. Angry. Yeah, angry. So and um, um, so for me, in that moment, of course, my expectation was the the people, the audience will stand next to me, so to to understand me and and support me. Uh, not uh, what's in material sense, but but uh, uh, ideologically, for example. So different shows, different expectation, but mostly, uh, of course, the expectation is that the, the people try to to understand our uh, our point of views. So somehow to intellectually understand. So what is the cause of your work? What why you want to talk to us? What is this? And of course, there are some other layers, aesthetical layers, for example. So to understand the the codes of the shows, so it's the maximum. But I don't uh, uh, ex expect uh, from the audience to, after the show to to go to the street and change the political system. So um, it's not it, when when I'm working in the theater. It's it's not my expectation. My expectation is to understand, try to understand, uh, and talk about it and use it for intellectual conversations. So, but not, uh, 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 I don't believe personally uh, in the case of my shows, so they can't uh, move more the people. So it is the limit of this kind of activity, it is what I, what I think. So if I want to uh, do something more, so I have to leave the theater, so I have to go out of the theater to go to the, to the people, it is what we tried in, in, in different projects and some uh, try to go to the people and just use the theater for something. So, but in the, that case, for me, theater is not so important. And aesthetical question is not so important anymore for me. Only one thing: what is important, the students or the the, the people who we work with uh, can step further in their personal life, and we can step further in uh, in political sense. But. Uh, in the, the theater, in this kind of theater, when we are in the in the room, so I think there is some some rules of this uh, theater. So if if I try to tell a story, there are many many dramaturgical consequences and, and other um, traditional uh, questions. So because of this, it's not the not the same. For example, I can't make an interactive show for uh, if the actors are not want to do it. So and it is what I told. Earlier, so I have to serve the interest of the the, the companies, the theaters, the, the institute. So I can't say like, okay, I want to uh, break out from the theater, but if they don't want to follow me, it's it's impossible. So it is why I, for me, it's so important how the artist me can uh, can can find his own position, his or her own position. So it's it's and. Uh, and I think, of course, when I'm talking about entertainment, so I think uh, I have to deal with not just my expectation, but what I can expect from the people, but I have to think what the people can accept from me. So it's a common game. So, uh, And of course, in the, in the situation when I am working in different uh, countries, I don't know anything about the uh, audience. So, because of this, I have to be very cautious with this question. Is this, I want what kind of expectation I can have? So, firstly, I have to step. So, something like this. Um, in
in your show, uh, Janina, uh, you have different artistic positions, uh, which on wheel during uh, the artistic artist talks, um, and they are very different. They are like left and right, conservative and liberal points of view, maybe. But also the the last artist is a silent artist, somebody who would not speak. Um, and that you offer like many points of view to the audience. Uh, what is what is your expectation? What kind of uh, viewer do you have in mind? Um, Actually, for for us, the rehearsal the rehearsals were a test <laughs> because we had to be all the time um, in uh, in that position that doesn't say black <coughs> or white, and um, not to to do a parody of uh, leftist uh, perspective uh, or uh, right perspective. But because when, when you see an artist, it, it's a person, and uh, it's very complicated. Uh, I don't know how much we um, managed to do that or how much we failed, but what I wanted from our meeting with the audience was to, to, um, to understand together, because some things are not clear for me as well, or for, for the team I was working with. I mean, um, um, for instance, I um, I cannot understand um, the, the 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 way the the, the public discourse is polarized. Uh, there is no there is no um, communication anymore. There is no dialogue. Um, there is somebody saying this and somebody saying just the opposite. And uh, they continue doing that, you know, without trying to, uh, to really understand what's on stage there. So uh, uh, in, in this case I had in the last, let's say, three, four years some very strange surprises of artists who, who expressed their personal position, okay, uh, fair enough, but uh, you cannot say I just expressed my personal position and uh, I don't care, it's my personal uh, freedom, whatever. It's not that, you are a public figure. And the, the artistic discourse, the plays, performances, uh, I don't know, inter artistic interventions are part of a public discourse. If we agree to that, we really have to be, uh, I don't know, more, uh, not careful in the sense that would uh, destroy our creativity, but uh, I don't know, more aware that we are part of a, uh, of a network of relationships and negotiations and so on. So that's, in a way, that's what I was trying to do with this, uh, with this performance. To, yeah, to have this meeting with uh, the audience. And, yeah, trying to, to, to examine our own uh, honesty, in a way, during the... And we had different perspectives while rehearsing. Not radically different, but it was uh, for me it was interesting to, to work on it first of all. And we never do artist talk afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> so this is an exception, you are to But no, this is before. <laughs> okay. I would just like to add one more thing. Uh, uh, practically, both Janine and Arvid were talking about like what we expect from the audience, and it was communication more or less, uh, and it was about co uh, establishing of you know the. the like cognitive communication in the sense of you know political, rational, and so on. But I would say that at least for us, and I would th I would say that it, it's also for both of us that, that doing this job, emotional communication is also extremely important. And that emotional aspect of transmitting our political messages is something that uh, at least I know that we wanted to to have, and I know that I always want to have because somehow like the whole. The uh, 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 emotional part of politics is something that is so often uh, put uh, aside and so often uh, is spoken about it in the sense, uh, like in some derogatory sense, in, the, in the, like it's that emotions do not have their part in 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 the, in the politics, and actually it's completely the opposite. It's always uh, like the politics is always about emotions besides all the other things.
I just want to add. And I, I also want to add uh, about the expectations of uh, audience and working in, in institutions uh, as you have to follow some rules. I think that also, uh, in a way, uh, um, uh, I would not say that when you go into uh, theater institutions, uh, you are supposed to uh, uh, follow the rules of the expectation of the audience, the system and everything else because I think this then leads to some kind of a status quo and in a way I treat, um, I think also Olga, uh, theatre as some kind of a also society so it's the same, okay of course that we go into the public sphere and do other things, not just theatre uh, and, but uh, also I think in theatre we should challenge these rules not like making experiments just for the sake of being different or something like that but just challenging all, all the rules in the theatre as the theatre system is in a way a microcosmos of the society so you always have very similar rules in it as you have in a wider society so challenging these rules in a way is also challenging the rules of the society and thinking that things can change in the theatre and that you can actually reflect something in the theatre even in this really local society, very small, small space uh, means that you can maybe in a way spread it to a more global level and I really think that uh, I'm much closer uh, in the last many years uh, uh, thinking that the, the world, the system, will change from smaller, smaller local societies. Uh, it will go from, from uh, the bottom, uh, not from, from up. So in this way, I think that changing things in these small spaces is also very important, as it is, of course, uh, doing it in a, in a wider scale. And for me, it's, uh, I don't know, it's really a personal thing, as I'm not on, on uh, social media, uh, at all, uh, I, uh, for me, this is much more important to do it in a in a good sense, in a sense that I really uh, think that in this small audience of how many people, 30 people, that you can say something and maybe communicate in an emotional sense also, than to spread uh, activism through social media because I think that this, uh, of course, is in a way important, but still a lot of messages just uh, because it's so many activisms and so many messages that I think people often get lost in it in a way and, and this freedom of expression uh, gets uh, in a way, uh, uh, I don't know how to, how to say it, but uh, it goes uh, sometimes the other way around, yeah. So, yeah, I just want to try this. Um, I think um, this is the moment to, Olga just said the word communication, so we should start to communicate between each other and I would like to ask uh, some people if they are willing to reflect upon uh, what has been said or open up new topics related to this one maybe. Can I have just one question? Yeah, but please use the mic because we are I have just one question because I am really embarrassed because I don't know what does it mean political theater or I don't know if you, uh, the four of you or the five of you, have the same definition because I I'm, I'm really don't I'm not sure I do understand. I don't remember if I used this word this morning, but I'm ready to use it. The others, yes. I used it. I am. So, turn it out. No, I, I use the word activist. Janina, would you... Mm. <laughs> um, it's, it's a long discussion and I'm sure each of us has very different definitions. For instance, I even think that what our uh, national, the director of our national theatre in Bucharest is doing political theatre in this theatre. It's the biggest uh, political theatre. Um, what I am trying to do is uh, to, um, to test the limits of my understanding uh, of this reality through means of theater. I, I have no um, ambition to, I don't know, to, to save the world, like you said, to, 
to go on street, to make people go on streets and change. I don't think theater can do that, but I think on a long term um, we can open discussions. And for me, um, um, society is political. People are um, in, in, in a political world, and theater is part of this uh, of this world. That's pretty much. What I think. But you also said, which might surprise some people, uh, me included, that uh, to do a musical might be, or is a political theater. It depends what kind of musical you do, but uh, no, I, uh, it's, it's in a way what I'm really? thinking about the National Theatre in Bucharest. Not to speak about the reality, it's a political decision. Mm -hmm. To do commercial theatre, it's a political decision, because you don't want to have problems, let's say, or you, yeah, you just want to keep a nice environment where people come, relax, whatever, whatever, and uh, disconnect totally from reality. And that's a, a political choice. Yeah, choice, I guess. But it's really long discussion. It's true, I, I, I said this word and uh, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> because I, I myself, I don't like to be put in this uh, social, political, whatever. But, um, yeah, sometimes we are lazy. I, I, yeah, I didn't drink a lot of coffee and stuff. <laughs> no, I, I really want to agree with uh, Janino when she said uh, that uh, this position of choosing what you want to do is a political position. Like, if you want to choose not to challenge the system, just to be inside it, it's also a political decision. And I think uh, that, uh, that, that that makes complete sense. But in a way, I think that political theater today is uh, maybe a word uh, as freedom, as lots of other words that uh, completely lost its meaning uh, by uh, uh, being so like, you know, uh, uh, political theater, you think that uh, that means that it really cha uh, challenges politics, but it doesn't mean that actually, in, in most senses it doesn't challenge anything. But it's called political why? Because it's talking about society, it's talking about current uh, topics, it's uh, reflecting on things that are actually happening today in the world, but that does not, for me, mean it's political. No, not necessarily. And, and, and yes, in, in, a, in a way we all use the phrase political theater, uh, and, and I think that whatever we each one of us thinks that is political theater, uh, 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 and I could agree in many things with you, of course, but the way how we use the phrase in the discussions like this, we assume that it's the political, that, uh, uh, that it's a theater that deals with, you know, to important topics in the society, and, that some, and, and then we say, okay, so, I don't know, we made a show about um, this and that, or we talked about uh, workers' rights, or we talked about the gold mine, or we talked about, uh, 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 I don't know, corruption in the government, whatever the topic is. So it's political topic par excellence, and we do not go further. And yes, you're right, sometimes we are lazy. Uh, <coughs> yes, of course, I, I completely agree. So all of the theaters uh, are for political theaters somehow, if we want, if we not. So it is, so uh, on one hand, so this is what I think, it's when the people uh, uh, together uh, somewhere and uh, they feel each other emotionally, rationally, so it's when we start to talk about what happened on the stage, what happened with, with the people next to us, so somehow in a wide sense it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's a political situation, so we go to theatre, it's a political situation, it is something about our culture, our, our political system, if we use theatre for this or that, so on one hand. On the other hand, of course, there are different um, political, um, how to say, the, um, political effect of the, the uh, different shows or different theatres. But if we, for example, if you talk about, uh, if I know exactly, the Alexander Hamilton, it was the uh, title of this American uh, uh, musical. It's a musical, but it was a very important uh, effect on the American society. Uh, to talk about uh, uh, migration or so, so what we uh, can do with each other. So it was so, so important, it was 
was so important to the, the, the president of the United States, he called his people to call this artist in the White House to, to sing the song about this kind of questions. But it's just a musical, so if you see this, it's just a, just a musical, a very professional musical, so I like to make this kind of professional musical, so it's something very strong. So, but on the other hand, of course, when you see a, uh, some drama pedagogists who are working in a school uh, with the people, uh, with the students. Uh, it's it's uh, so political. It's so important to how they talk about the very important questions. So uh, I think it's maybe the the question is the effectivity. So it's what is the what we can we can reach. Uh, how many people we can reach, and how, 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 what, what we can do with these people. Because of this, I think it's very important to talk about the responsibility of the, of the, the, uh, the, uh, the institutional leaders, or the, the, the leaders of the festivals, leaders of the theatres, because they can build the context uh, uh, for, for the performances and for the artists. So how many people we can reach, how many people we can involve to, together, what kind of topics we can give the mass. So to, to so it's so important question. Every moment, every decision in the theatre, I think, is a political political decision. If a, if a, if a director of a theatre says, yeah, I don't want to deal with the politics, so I completely agree. It's it's politics as well. So I think it's much uh, that this kind of uh, social awareness for me is. Uh, among the artists is so important, so how they can realize what they do, it's, it's a political uh, activity. It is what, of course, I have a, a more experience in, 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 in Hungary, but it's, it's one of the biggest problems, I think, among the artists. So they absolutely not realize their political roles. So it is, uh, uh, for example, I read about a very famous uh, an article with, uh, or an interview with a uh, very famous uh, Hungarian actor who said, yes, I, I, I have a plan to join to, to the demonstration, so participate in the demonstration. So, so I feel it's, 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 uh, it's, it can be important or not, I, 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 I don't know, but maybe. so in 2017 it's a very, very low level of uh, uh, thinking and, and he's a really important person uh, in, in, uh, among the artists and they, uh, he gives uh, many, many uh, interviews, you know, so he reached the people, so very, uh, lots of people, and it is the message to these people, this kind of, I don't know what is this, so it's, uh, I think when we talk about the responsibility of the artists or the institutional leaders, so it's so important to, firstly, to understand our roles and after to do something, uh, uh, it's a responsible question. Yes, and just one thing, uh, just I wanted to refer to Augusto Boal. So it's so interesting, this very wide political sense, so from Alexander Hamilton to Augusto Boal in, in Brazil. So it's, so I think it's it's more interesting to talk about the different uh, different type of theatres, different um, the goals. So what is the goal with the different type of political theatre? So what we want to reach, because Augusto Boal uh, wish was very high, so it's it's very high expectation. So not just to talk about the, uh, the problems, but to change the, the, the laws, to change the, the system. And, uh, and and at the end he joined it to the, 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 the city municipal, so it's, it was so important to be closer and closer to politics. And at the end they, uh, he, he had to reach the politics, so at the end he, he became a politician. So at the end, so it's, it's a very, very wide perspective. So. More interventions, please. Christina, maybe. Yes, uh, thank you. It's a very interesting conversation, of course. Um, coming back to the, to the, well, the title of this discussion, artists and social responsibility. Uh, I think uh, in history there are times when social responsibility is much more important than others, and we, I think, I believe that we are living in times that uh, demand, in a way, from the artists to be social responsible. So um, I think the discussion is now uh, the change of the balance between the aesthetics and the ethics. I think the ethics is much more important in times like this um, than in other uh, historical times. And it's a cyclical movement, I think. 
so um, going uh, away from uh, political res social responsibility or political theater, um, I think it's um, it's obvious that it's not um, a real option anymore. I mean, we are so uh, and your show last night uh, was talking about that uh, in a very interesting way. And it's important that it is in a theater because you reach an audience that it might not be reached any anywhere else. Um, you, you cannot do this kind of work in, uh, in the street. You do other kinds of work. And this is why uh, I think a musical like um, Hamilton is very important too, because it uses an instrument which is not uh, political uh, in any other uh, ways uh, to address a political uh, question. Uh, and talking about the only uh, founding father that is not white. And talking about white and uh, non-white in American society, uh, as Philip knows better than any of us, it's very important at this point in time. So it's very, I think it's very, it's a responsibility for the artist not to be, uh, what well, to to live in, in, its, in his or her society uh, and use any powerful instrument of this, uh, um, including the spectacle, in the sense that he, the Boer, used the term, the society of the spectacle, you have to use this spectacle um, to address political <coughs> questions and to raise the responsibility of, of people in the audience. I mean, it's um, the responsibility of the artist, I think it's questioning all the time, questioning the society, questioning the system, any system, questioning ideology and questioning, questioning himself or herself. Uh, I think that's, and of course, it, it can, he can, he or her can do it in any, in any form uh, and this is the question of creativity, but there is no way around social responsibility anymore, I think. Thank you. Um, Philip, I asked also, also Philip I know, uh, to make an intervention. Sorry. Yes, sorry. No, for, it's fine. Okay. It's fine. Uh, I, have, I have just one short question. For yeah, please, other. then we go back. Yeah. Okay, uh, Edwin, uh, coming from Zagreb, Zagreb Youth Theatre, Croatia. I, have, I will skip from this um, political field to this aesthetical field. And the question is, uh, as I saw the last two of your performances, the one you did in Cetinje and the, the, the last one yesterday here. I have a feeling that you enter in the kind of new field of uh, your aesthetics. I'm talking about the visual thing, that can be also a political decision, of course, but that, that's the question. You understand? Yeah? yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, yes, firstly, it's a it's an important decision not to use it, um, the set and the costume or something like that. So, yeah, it's so important to... The, the cause of the decision, so different causes of the decision, but first is the, the focus of the actors. So somehow it is a uh, decision how I can involve the actors more into the, the artistic work. How they can feel their responsibility. Of course, it's... Maybe it's not evident for them it's a political uh, responsibility, but it's somehow to, to, to be in front of the audience without any help is uh, uh, somehow our common education. So how we can be more adult and how we can take responsibility for our words, what we improvise, how we stand in front of the audience. What, and of course the next step, what's happening if the audience asks us, and what, what is our answer, how we can talk about our work. It's so important question. So it is one thing. The other thing is to talk about uh, this emptiness. So how, uh, so we can give a new sense of the space. We, it's like somehow like a message. So we, so uh, not everything, but lots of things uh, can can depend on, on on our decisions, our activities. So somehow it's another uh, question. I just talk about the uh, aesthetics outside but to talk about the, uh, much more about the relations among the among the people so focus on the human aspect somehow so there are but I don't want to use the, the time from the others but it's it's a longer topic to talk about this question uh, for me all the time the statement is you see there is this empty space and if this this will be a 
fulfill space if we if we understand each other, if we can, if we trust each other, if we can uh, 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 can develop something together. But if not, so if we can't understand each other, if we can't uh, step to each other, so at the end there there, there won't be any changing. So the set or music or very special effects can't can't uh, hide or. Our, our, uh, our emptiness. So somehow it's it's an important uh, thing in it, and uh, and of course it's something about the audience as well. So for me it's so important this question: how we can? It, I don't want to call it like education, but how we can imagine, how we can use our fantasy, our imagination, so how we can build our 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 pictures, and it, it's a little bit more more work maybe. And of course in that case we can't avoid to talk about the performance somehow. Because we can talk about uh, a lot of other things, so the, 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 the surface of the performance that maybe it's one, it's a little help to step closer to the, the real topic. So there are this kind of answers to these questions and many, uh, not many, but some other things as well, but I don't want to use more time, but it's okay for, okay. Um, So. Maybe we could uh, go back to this um, uh, topic. Um, may maybe one year ago I wouldn't invite Philippe Arnaud to talk about political theatre in the United States but because our countries and realities were so different, but um, things are rapidly changing there and I, I wanted to ask Philippe Arnaud, since he's here and he see a lot of um, interesting ongoing things in theater in the United States relating to this new social reality or new political reality. Uh, would, you, um, would you please um, tell us something about what's going on there? It's very dark in America <laughs> right now. Uh, it's darker than any time in my professional career. And for you to get the news daily is like a rolling tsunami of madness about what's going on. But there are some signs, some really healthy signs, coming from the theater makers and the theater workers uh, in my country that are, we were all shocked. No one believed this was going to happen. I don't think Trump believed it was going to happen. But we've been coming out of that coma out of that shock. <clears throat> and I want to give you four or five little quick snapshots. Uh, right now, what's happening in America, playwrights are writing plays about what's going on. Now, the process in America usually takes those plays two or three years to ever get on stage, ever get on stage. A very well-respected playwright, Pulitzer Prize winner, Tony Award winner, wrote a play in six days following the inauguration of Donald Trump. It's called Building the Wall. Two nights ago, it had its first performance in Tehran. About four weeks ago, my colleague right over here, Michael Dove, uh, directed the Washington, D.C. performance. I'm going to ask Michael to talk about this when I finish, because there's more wonderful details. Uh, I actually have Robert's most recent script, and I've been, at his request, handing it out to people. Uh, it's about a post-Trump reality. A very strong play, and I think it opens Wednesday night in New York, Thursday night in New York. Mm -hmm. It's in previews in New York. Here's one example of a very quick response to this dark reality. Another thing that happens is American theaters start talking about their seasons. What we're going to do in September of 17 through May or June of 18. And already you can see that joint that Big theaters and small theaters really are coalescing around resistance, are looking at 
the major American repertory theater arena stage just was given two and a half million dollars by one donor to commission ten plays about presidential abuse of power. Then a small theater that's probably got a budget that ten million dollars would keep it alive for two hundred years is also announcing a new play about the presidential abuse of powers. There are gatherings that will begin to happen, professional gatherings, whether it's the repertory theaters coming together, whether it's the independents coming together, and what we're talking about, what's on your brains, is on their brains today. And then lastly, just talking to individuals. I was in San Francisco in December talking to a young 25-year-old director who'd come to San Francisco to mount her political play, thought she'd be able to get it up in this rich theatrical environment in three or four months. It was now a year and a half. She was getting closer to getting it up, but this was a month after Trump was elected and had this very serious conversation with me about turning her back on San Francisco and going to Oklahoma City to open her play, going into the middle of that Trump land. We are not just discovering that the theater is a part of resistance. There's a strain of political theater that has been alive and real some people are in their 60s, some people are young people who've been trained by those people in their 50s or 60s. I think America could be a very interesting place to watch as you see some very serious theater artists taking on some very dark times. And I also think that there is a connection, those of you who've worked in America, who've had connections with American artists, deep connections, know that those connections are going to be very important to my American colleagues. <coughs> Excuse me, in, the, in these uh, really dark days that are coming for us. Because every day it's crazier and crazier. Michael, would you just talk a little bit about, I mean, this, I think there have been six performances within three months of him finishing writing the play. Michael Dove is the artistic director of the, um, not Forum Theater, Forum Theater, outside of Washington. Uh, yes, um, so just speaking to that play in particular, Building the Wall, uh, yeah, it was written very quickly and we have, uh, as Philip was saying, this tradition of you know, we write a play and then we workshop it and we workshop it and we workshop it until it's, there's nothing left. Um, uh, and it's so far removed from sort of the, the spark and sort of the catalyzing idea of why it was written. Um, and so Robert, who is uh, very well known, um, also writes for um, Oscar nominated, writes for film as well. Um, wrote this play very quickly, and I think that his prominence has certainly helped this play surface and get a lot of people interested. Um, but, I don't know, 97% of all the theaters in America use this season tradition, right? Where we, we, we choose the slate of work that we're going to do next year, and those, those pieces are uh, a year to a year and a half away from when the choice to, to produce the show uh, actually occurs. Um, and so this play came up and three theaters, the three of us initially decided to do it immediately and, and add it into our season. We actually removed the show from our season um, and replaced it with this show. Um, mostly because I think everyone was sort of questioning what our role has to be now after this election. Uh, I think that it was really fascinating to hear a lot of sort of this conversation of uh, I, I wrote down the, um, there's no problem selling tickets to socially conscious theater, um, which is the exact opposite in America. Um, uh, to even evoke the phrase political theater is this like third rail of making sure that no one will come to your play. Um, uh, because uh, audiences see theater so much as escapism. 
Um, and so, but that that has completely changed in uh, how we live our lives now, where uh, Americans are so tuned into the news constantly. There's this, uh, you know, as Philip was saying, it's like every five minutes there's some new crazy news alert. Um, and then we're based in Washington, D.C., um, where everyone is super well connected to what's happening all the time. I live two blocks away from the Capitol. Um, uh, and yet we live in a city that 96% of the residents voted for Hillary Clinton. And so we have this like huge separation and removal from what the rest of America, um, and this uh, not majority, but um, large chunk of the country who voted differently. Um, so yeah, so, so the play, um, a lot of us chose it in a moment of certainly resistance and protest, um, but I think what has what has uh, become interesting about the play as it's evolved and in its different lives is it's, um, from a story perspective, it's it's a play where um, you have two characters, a historian and um, a man who's in prison. Um, and throughout the story, you slowly realize what this man has done, and then you slowly realize that it's actually taking place in 2019. Um, and it walks you through each tiny little decision about how um, our own personal responsibilities, um, these little things that we say, this, this is okay for today, um, can build and accumulate towards an, an atrocity, which essentially is um, this idea of uh, uh, what he's dealing with is uh, uh, privately owned prisons being used to house Mexican immigrants um, after a terrorist attack in Times Square. Um, and as so many people accumulate and lose control over being able to um, feed and medicate all of these people, so uh, it eventually turns into state-sponsored um, executions and um, uh, complete uh, thousands of people um, uh, killed. Um, and so where I think the conversation has evolved with the piece is that it's actually started to, um, to recognize that we, we no longer live in a left-right divide um, with this administration. This president is such uh, just an agent of chaos that um, we really feel that this piece isn't about speaking to liberals to affirm their beliefs and then speaking to conservatives to change their minds. That it's actually saying um, much in the sort of tradition of ancient Greek theater that it's about coming into a place and actually realizing what, where our common morality is and how we define that. Um, when we live uh, in a time where many of us feel this, this president um, does not, that lives outside of that common morality, even within a political left-right perspective. But tell them that Trump has been impeached for the, by the time the play starts. Yes. And he's in house arrest in Florida. In which uh, most nights gets a little cheer from the audience when they hear that Trump has been impeached in the play, but it's one line and then it moves on. Yeah, it's pretty fascinating. <laughs> Thank you. More questions, please, or more, more comments. Is there any? Yeah, there is one. Our situation in Romania is not so uh, not so dark. It's getting dark, but it's not so dark that Americans see it alive. Uh, I would like to ask uh, Janina, as I know uh, you will leave the uh, uh, Piatra Nantes uh, Theatre until now or in the next few months or when, when, we, when you start to leave the theatre. And uh, I have a, a very simple question. You are very famous uh, uh, about uh, putting uh, uh, the important things uh, on your play, uh, uh, doing play with uh, about social problem, problems and things like this. Um, <clears throat> will, will you, do, do you think you you could you can do in a state theater also these things what you did uh, until now, or will uh, they leave you to, to spend money on this? Problems, or I don't know. Do, do you have uh, do you have plans about this? How, how will you do this? I just want to add first of all, maybe 
this is a, a very interesting and important question to the other artists, those who work in state theatres, some of you do, some of you maybe don't, uh, to tell us a little bit about your relationship in, about, with uh, state theatres. In my case, uh, I, I was... Um, I was appointed as a temporary uh, manager. So um, I started last week, and it's 120 days at the maximum I will have this uh, job. So for the moment, let's say, um, I'm not sure what will happen, if I will apply or not. So I don't. I don't want to, to speak about any plan. I'm, what I'm doing now is to supervise that the theater is continuing the plan of the year. I mean, there is uh, this director, Rado Avrim, who is working. He was invited by the previous director. What I'm doing is to, to take care of uh, these uh, things to happen. And I would think if I would... Uh, apply for this job in uh, August or September, I don't know. But if it doesn't ask me, if they leave me, I mean, uh, and it's, uh, honestly, it's not the position I ever wanted. I don't, uh, I don't think, um, I don't know, uh, an artist should, um, should go for this kind of position. I'm, I'm sorry to be in this position. But I think um, uh, the situation is a disaster with the managers who are already uh, in these jobs in, in our theatres. For, for instance, in Bucharest, most of the managers are 65 plus. Most of them, that's not... Sorry? And me. And me, but it, do, it really doesn't matter. And they could be very good actors and still perform in theatres. But as a manager, I think you should have, I don't know, um, yeah, you should you should travel a lot, you should be very well informed and so on. It's not the case, let's say. So, um, yeah. As it also, it's a pol political uh, uh, deciding decides who is the theater uh, 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 director. So, I guess this is a political thing too in Romania also, it doesn't, isn't it? I mean, it's a political cine conduce in teatro. Evident. The question was if it's a political decision who is leading a theater in Romania. Um, yeah, I was invited. I was invited, and um, I don't know these people, but there was uh, they voted for me to be invited there. So yes. <laughs> At least. But the question also was how do you, if, if 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 maybe not in this concrete situation, could you imagine continuing in a state theater with those kind of projects you did before? Is is the state theater able to work on this project basis and? Um, why not? I mean, um, that's the mission of the theater. That's the very mission of the theater to 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 address to to do projects that are connected with the city. I mean, uh, those that theater and other theaters are functioning because of the public money. It's the money of the community of that town. So projects should be addressed, taking in consideration this community, thinking about it. I'm not saying to fulfill their uh, expectations, you know, because um, that's not the point, but to address and first of all you have to know this community, to whom you are speaking. And most of the theaters in Romania, they have no idea and they don't care. So you ask me if they leave me. If they don't leave me, I leave them. There is no, there is no other way. I mean, uh, as an artist, for sure, I will not work in this theater. I will not direct. I will not work as an artist. So, if I uh, uh, invite uh, artists, they they shouldn't uh, do the same things like me. That would be not interesting. And, but
But of course, I will have a strategy, and I think. Yes, my, if, my question was if because I you know, apply, yeah, if I will apply for this. Who gives the money can give you, uh, you, you should do what we want. The to community do. of the town gives the money, not the boss of the party. Well, the community I mean, gives the money. You are saying this, but <laughs> the political sphere doesn't seem like the this. law. The law says this. So. Yeah. And if you are not able to do it, you should leave this position. It's very simple. It's not so complicated. I, but I don't think the managers that we have up till now, they had any big pressure not to do that. I, I don't think it was so... I think it was easier to... to not, not to yeah, think too much, I guess. It's again, I think, about being lazy. Do you want to reflect upon this question of working in the state theater, in repertory theater? What are the frames of? Yeah, I used to work in the state theaters everywhere, yeah. But I much more like to lead the state theater, so, to, to, because there is a, it's a huge possibility, so it's very, very interesting you know, to lead the, the institute. What is interesting for me is the institute, how we can use a state institute, because it's a huge possibility. It's a huge possibility in European culture. We have state, state cultural institutions, so it's a very, very good position. Which year was you applied to? I tried earlier, but today it's just a humiliation to do it. So I don't want to work a lot for free, and after to get back to my face, it's so it's a, it's not a perspective. So I'm an adult man. I think I try to think about it. So I don't need this kind of childish game because it's very predictable. So it's because of this, it's not it's not 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 a good no good situation to be a part of uh, this kind of stupid game because it's not a, not not a real competition. Because I I I, I, I would like a real competition. To a professional competition, but it's not a professional competition because if you see the committee who will decide about your uh, application, it's like a joke. So, you know, I don't want to ask this kind of artist to judge my application because I would like to judge them. So, because it's not, uh, it's, we are not in the same. But I, 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 of course, I think it's not so modest what I say, but I see what I see, and it's. Uh, I have to say like this. So I'm after 20 years professional career, and I think is what I see in Hungary in this in this question, it's it's impossible. And the other problem is the people who can who can uh, uh, do this, who have uh, uh, professional experiences and, and uh, enough knowledge to lead this kind of uh, institutions, they leave the countries more and more, and it's a huge problem. So the real talents and, and from my generation, so it's. Um, it's pretty sad. So because of this, it's it's uh, it is why I choose this way. Because when I can leave uh, my country, it's much more free discussion somehow, and I feel a total it's a total different character. What I can what I can feel. So it's adult conversations, you know. So to meet with uh, some some theater leaders who are thinking a lot about the uh, about the audience, about the, the social. Uh, uh, context of the theater, so it's so so interesting conversation. So in this kind of conversation, what I can't meet in 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 in, in Hungary. So I think, yeah. But it is what we can say about our 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 our, our, our professional context everywhere. I just, but I think that the, the fact that are, we have state institutions, I think it's very very good. And very important, and of course, it's 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 uh, it's a question how how about the budget, about the, the relation to the municipality, state, and so on. So it's about the laws. So, but but the fact we can, it exists, it's very good. I'm afraid of the the changing of this more and more neo neoliberal uh, effect can 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 uh, make a big changing in this. And after we will lose this kind of chance to, we are very far to to 
uh, rebuild this kind of construction. So we, are, we just go to the festivals to see our, uh, the shows of each, uh, each other and we are on this level but it's very difficult to step a little bit higher situation to talk about the audience, the perspective, the structures, the future and da da da. So it is what I, I don't see the chance to talk about. Or we can talk like this so 30, 40 people can talk about it who understand uh, each other very well and who have no real power. So very interesting conversations but um, no effect. I somehow predict that you you might become an artistic director outside Hungary uh, earlier than in Hungary. So uh, I predict that it can happen. Maybe you have already something in mind to to apply to as an artistic director somewhere as outside I, I Hungary. Tried, yes, yes. There there was a, the the team who invited me in Germany to work together to apply. Uh, we did it, it was not successful, but it was very funny to, to, to think of it. No, uh, because they talked to me like a uh, normal human. It was, uh, <laughs> it, was, it was very nice to, just to be a part of this kind of group, to, to, to think uh, of something seriously. So, you know, when, when, when we didn't have to use, when we don't have to use the, this common thing, what we, we, we all the time we have to use in Hungary, you know, when we. Uh, Oh, you know what will happen. You know what what is the you you uh, so we know what will be the reaction of the committee and so it was a very fresh feeling with these people. Like we don't know, you know, it's a competition. We 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 will do the best and we will see what they will react and then uh, after we will talk about it. So it was a very fresh uh, to feel the something for the normal. Like, yeah, so it is. It was a good effect. But in Hungary, you know, all the time, if you talk to the professional people, so there is a leader of uh, one of the leader of one uh, Hungarian theatre here, Bea. So, so we we see what we see. So it's all the time. When you write the first word of your uh, of your uh, application, so you know what will be the, uh, the reactions. Maya and Tonga, do you want to go into this topic, working with state theatres and with what are those frames, how we can use those frames? Well, actually, we uh, haven't been in a position to be uh, in a managing position of these, and I think we will not. <laughs> Maybe no, one day, who knows? <laughs> but not in these next uh, couple of years, few months. Uh, actually, we. We've been working uh, a lot in institutional theater. Uh, most of our were playwrights, uh, primarily. This is, uh, I think, a new thing for both of us. Uh, and maybe the last uh, couple of years, we started working in uh, uh, this kind of field uh, where uh, we expose each other as uh, performers and directors. Uh, but uh, I think that both of us uh, in our plays also uh, try to, uh, in a way, uh, challenge these uh, rules of institutional theatres uh, in the ways of form and also topics that we deal in in our plays. And uh, I can say I, I also had a chance uh, two years ago to direct in the National Theatre, which was very odd that they let me direct as I'm, uh, I was not a professional director. But uh, as uh, Janina was saying, if you have a manager of the theatre, director of the theatre that wants to risk some things, it can happen, also in institutions. Uh, and uh, it was a great experience for me to do something that uh, may not uh, well be uh, in mainstream uh, theatre scene. And, uh, but uh, we mostly prefer working uh, uh, on uh, uh, non-mainstream uh, scenes, uh, if we can call it that way, uh, independent scenes, uh, as we have a chance to work uh, in uh, maybe a freer environment from all these rules that you you uh, have to follow working in institutions. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I am very surprised because 10 years ago we were invited in Belgrade by the National Theatre and you were working there, which for me and Pekka Stefan, we, we came together, it was uh, unbelievable. <laughs> to have such a young playwright employed in the National Theatre running programs there. 
So it's very interesting that for you the way was um, the opposite. You, um, you started to work in these institutions, you uh, understood the structure and the way it functions and little by little you went away from... I got fired. Ah, you got fired, okay. <laughs> Uh, yes, I, uh, we, we, yeah, I, I remember that, yeah. But it was uh, some kind of a guerrilla thing then, but today, uh, but today it's actually uh, very uh, weird that uh, actually in the National Theatre we have uh, a really, really interesting thing going on, but it, uh, at this moment it only depends on one person that uh, wanted to uh, make this kind of a uh, I don't break through to uh, make the theater scene at the national different than it was before. Uh, but of course, uh, as it is here and everywhere else, it depends on the politics. He can also be, uh, you know, uh, replaced anytime soon. So I think it's still some kind of a guerrilla thing in Serbia. And these are just these small actions that are happening. It's very important. I, I agree with you. I work now. I don't work. I'm not employed at the National. But I work. I do some things. Uh, and, uh, do some very interesting things. Similar to the things I did then. And I, I completely agree with you that it's very important to go to the institutions and also try to change it from the inside. Uh, just let me add one thing uh, with the envy. Uh, when we learned in Hungary, like it, was, it happened one month ago or something like that, that you are appointed at the Piazza Theatre, I didn't read carefully the news and I didn't see that it's a temporary thing. Everyone said in our editorial board that nothing like that would happen in Hungary. I mean, to an independent artist to be appointed, uh, even if for temporary uh, uh, management, as an artistic director or manager of a repertory, portrait repertory theater. So, um, this is uh, the Hungarian point of view to Romania. Yeah, but, um, yeah we were also very envious. <laughs> Let's because tell more about because for, for 10 years, I, I remember speaking with you in Budapest and comparing the independent scene and the way it was financed, the Romanian independence. It's all gone. I know it's all gone, but for us it was always the same, you know? So at least we are trained. We had nothing since 89, but at least we had the chance. And you had these very famous uh, directors, like Alpha Chilling here, who could have a time where things were possible. I mean the independent scene. I I'm not sure if you'll agree with me, but if you will get to know the independent scene from 2002 up till now, you will understand. I think what from 2000 till 2010 it was a time of prosperity. Yes, it was for a time for of Tucker and other other. Uh, and we were very envious here. I mean, because for us, independent meant most of the time precarity. A lot of us, of course, it was a lot of struggle for the Hungarian directors, but. In, in another context, a bit, you know. It could grow, so, yeah. so um, for me, this discussion is very interesting because even if we are in Europe and uh, we share the same problems, still sometimes we have different contexts, similarities, but then uh, some uh, things that are a bit uh, different and interesting. That's why it's interesting because you can learn how others uh, solve. And also, she's an exception. So, those exceptions are yeah. in the rule. Not necessarily, because, uh, sorry to turn to you, but when you were the selector of the National Festival for three years, for the National Festival, we were looking at that from Hungary, a young woman critic selecting for a national festival? What? That again could never happen in Hungary. You so well, exceptions meet here in this room, which is great. Yes, we are, we are like Arvan said, we are like a small cult. And yeah. we have no agency anymore. So I, I mean, we don't have a real agency in the, in the, in the public field where the public budgets, big budgets are working, uh, and yeah, we cannot build a, um, a 
can, we cannot make a difference with exceptions, I think. Of course, exceptions are important and we can uh, fight to, to see more of them, but it's not enough. I have to say that you just made it sound like it's like Serbia is a dreamland. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we're talking also about independent scene and how people from the independent scene might maybe get uh, 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 into the institutions. It's important that somehow we all agree that state funded culture, state funded theater is essential. That, that, like we must not give up from the institutions. But there is another thing, like the independent scene is struggling everywhere, but it's still depending on the state support. And uh, 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 very often when we talk about theater, we talk about mainstream theater and independent scene, like institutions and uh, 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 those who are outside of institutions. But what we have, for example, in the theater where we uh, that produced uh, the OK Bit of uh, Festival and Bit of Theater produced our show, and it's the typical of an example of co-productions that are emerging more and more. And you, uh, 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 what you have with them nowadays is that also the state is putting the money away from the institutions, pouring it, not really pouring it, but giving it through the competitions, annual competitions to the independent scene, not giving it enough, and then expecting independent scene to collaborate or to produce something or to do whatever with so little amount of money that it's actually completely impossible to do anything with that unless you work for free, more or less. And then it's like you have this completely weird situation where you have state-funded institutions, the state is not giving the money for them, or the municipalities or local governments are not giving so much money for them. They still expect the production to go on. One of the reasons, by the way, why National Theatre is managing in Serbia to be like very progressive at the moment is that they actually have money, because they're National Theatre, which other theatres do not. And then we all accept to play the game of, of uh, being on the independent scene and applying for the competitions and getting some small pieces of, of something from the state and then not being able to do anything with that and at the same time that's a very very nasty move that creates the false division between those who are working in the state institutions and those who are working on the independent scene and it's a completely false uh, 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 it's a false struggle, it's a false conflict, since the problem is the same and the problem is, you know, a neoliberal cultural model that is being introduced so much in the connection with, very often, in, in the case of Hungary, with horrible the, the, the government that is, you know, very, and in the case of Serbia as well, that is, you know, just taking uh, positions and putting uh, their people on the, on the spot and, uh, you know, trying to somehow, uh, 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 through the repertoire, also send their kind of politics. And and we're actually, uh, uh, in the, uh, like, we cannot say that we're part of independent scene because we work in the state theatres, but we also cannot say that we're part of the state theatres because we also work on the independent scene. And our common problem, and now I really speak too much, Actually, my point is that we all have the problem of, you know, withdrawing the money and ruining the institutions and going to the market and presenting, you know, fall, uh, like alternative ways of financing as something so natural and so beautiful, yeah. while at the same time it actually creates divide between artists who are in the same problem and all have the same enemy. Yeah. We have the same enemy, that's Um, I just want to reflect on that, on what you said, that I remember that period when the very strong cuts from the independent scene were seen in the Hungarian theatre and, and artists started to collaborate and then they became just part of, most of them became part of the state system. So it's, uh, and, and it ruined basically the independent scene because they couldn't continue their work and to sustain their companies. It's a very bad direction, I think. Not the collaboration in, in itself, but how it is this step-by-step -step ruining of the independence happened in Hungary. So, it's 12 o'clock. Um, if, if there is one last question, we can, uh, we can put that on the table.
It's not a question, it's a constatation. When we are talking about freedom, we always finish our talking about money. <laughs> so money is very connected with the freedom. Uh, what worries me very much, uh, I'm working in institutional theatre right now, and I'm also trying to be free will, choosing the topics of performances. And uh, sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not easy. Of course, because people, politicians who are managing and deciding about financing actually um, mani manipulate theatres and then uh, they cut money if they don't agree uh, about your repertoire, which is completely because we are financed by public money in the United States is completely different. What worries me in this very moment uh, because Europe now is changing cultural policy and they are actually decided to call culture, culture uh, creative industry. And we, have, we feel that pressure now in Zagreb, especially with that industry. We need uh, to have audience, we need selling tickets, we need, uh, I don't know how many performances, statistics, money, and I, sometimes I feel like working in, corpor in a corporation, not in the theater. And uh, maybe other question that I will ask privately our colleagues from the United States, private donators who are giving money to finance uh, performances talking against, of course, that present you have now, how much they manipulate through financing artists in certain topics. I just want to talk generally how money actually is very connected with freedom. Thank you. I think we started with this. Gentlemen have started with theatre becoming very commercial, and uh, this is something we see everywhere. I think that the pressure of ticket sales and uh, and, uh, and reaching large audiences is very big, coming from everywhere. Also, coming probably from the ambitions of artists as well. Uh, I don't have the right words to conclude this discussion, uh, but I would like to thank you, all the artists present here and the very active audience. And uh, I'm really pleased that we tried to understand each other, which is uh, not so easy always, and we don't share the same vocabulary. And it's uh, it's important to try to find. Uh, the meanings, the common meanings behind the words. So I wish everybody um, a very good festival which is just open. There are plenty of shows which will probably make this discussion even more larger and richer. Thank you so much. <laughs>